Hello everyone. In our last video, we have completed the chapter of A Photograph. It is a poem written by Shirley Toulson. So, in today's video, we are going to start with a short story, The Address, written by Marga Milko. So, without wasting any more time, let us begin with the story. First, let me introduce the story to you. This short story is a poignant account of a daughter. Actually, the daughter over here is the narrator, Marga Milko, who goes in search of her mother's belongings after the war in Holland. And when she finds them, the objects evoke memories of her early, earlier life. But she decides to leave them all behind and she decides to move forward, to move on. Now, let me ask you a question. What is a war? In simple words, a war is a conflict between different countries or different groups. A war or conflict arises due to mismatching of concepts or opinions, due to misunderstanding. And there may be many more reasons for a war. And we all know that war causes death and destruction, loss of lives, insecurities, poverty, identity crisis, and a war also have psychological and mental impact in people's mind. War leads to severe identity crisis of the people as well because uh, after a war people are like confused that which place do they actually belong to, where do we, they have to settle in etc etc. Although the common man do not take part in a war himself he is definitely affected by a war economically as well as mentally. People have to leave their possessions, their motherland, their belongings and they have to move to some unknown place with the hope of survival. This leads to their economical downfall. Many people lose their close and near and dear ones, their relatives and thus are emotionally and mentally affected. Thus. Overall, a war leads to a massacre situation. Now, do you know, in the poem After Blenheim, written by Robert Saudi, the poet has told us about the futility of war. He has told us that a war is useless and that it is no good. He has also told us that a war only causes harm to innocent people. But the reality is that even today, wars take place. And wherever there will be a war, a massacre situation will prevail. Poverty, grief, mourning, sadness, death, destruction and loss will be the most probable scenario of that place. The story, the address, has a war-prone background. It demonstrates the after-effects of a war. It is a very simple story which does not have any such plot or storyline. This story is mainly narrative and the author, Marga Minko, narrates her account with a lady named Mrs. Darling. Now, the story of the address is about the human predicament that follows the pre-war and post-war periods. There are four main characters in this story. First is Mrs. S, who was a Jew and a rich lady. Second character is Mrs. Darling, who was a non-Jew. Third character is the narrator, that is the daughter of Mrs. S, Marga Minko. And the fourth character is Mrs. Darling's daughter. Now, Mrs. S was a rich lady. At least, she had been a rich lady until before the war in Holland. And Mrs. Darling was not a Jew, whereas Mrs. S was a Jew. The daughter of Mrs. S had lost her house and her mother during the war. And now she had decided to come back to take her possessions from Mrs. Darling, whose address was given to her by her mother years ago. When she, that is the author and the daughter of Mrs. S, reached the house, the woman, that is Mrs. Darling, treated her 
with a cold reception and didn't let her into the house. She decided to go back anyway and then she met Mrs. Darling's daughter who let her in and told her to wait inside. When she saw all the possessions in front of her for which she had come so far to meet Mrs. Darling, she couldn't connect with those possessions because the people whose memories were associated with those objects were now gone and that is why she decided to leave the house and move forward. So, let me tell you the summary of the story. After ringing the doorbell of Mrs. Darling's house, who lived at number 46 Macaroni Street, the protagonist, that is Marga Minko, was given a cold reception and Mrs. Darling took much time to recognize her. Mrs. Darling had actually thought that everybody in the girl's family was dead and asked if anyone else with had come along with her. Mrs. Darling refused to let the narrator, the author, get inside her home and she told the narrator to come back sometime later. The protagonist, that is the narrator, recognized her mother's green cardigan which Mrs. Darling was wearing. Anyways, the narrator decided to go back to the train station and when she was returning, she thought about her mother. She was recalling her old memories and she remembered that how her mother had told her about Mrs. Darling, who was an acquaintance of hers. During the war, Mrs. Darling would visit their house regularly and take their possessions with her as she didn't want them to get lost if they ever left the place. Mrs. Darling had a broad back. Now, the narrator decided to go to Mrs. Darling's home to get back their belongings. When she rang the bell, Mrs. Darling's daughter answered the door. She let her in and asked her to wait in the living room. When the narrator, Marga Minko, reached the living room, she was horrified as well as astonished as she saw all her mother's things and belongings that were arranged in a tasteless manner. The furniture was ugly and the room had a muggy smell. Mrs. Darling's daughter offered her a cup of tea and the protagonist, that is, the narrator, noticed the old tablecloth that heard that had a burn mark on it and she immediately recognized that it once belonged to them. When Mrs. Darling's daughter was showing off the silver fork and spoons that actually belonged to the narrator once, she jumped up and walked out of the house and she decided not to visit the place again as it brought back memories of the past and she decided to forget the address and move forward. Now, let us start reading the story. Do you still know me? I asked. The woman looked at me searchingly. She had opened the door a chink. I came closer and stood on the step. No, I don't know you. I am Mrs. S's daughter. So, here the narrator, that is, Marga Minko asked the woman standing at the door if she still knew her and the lady had opened the door a little bit. The narrator came closer to the door and asked the woman whether she knew her or not. The woman responded negatively and then the narrator introduced herself. She told that she is Mrs. S's daughter. She held her hand on the door as though she wanted to prevent it from opening any further. Her face gave absolutely no sign of recognition. She kept staring at me in silence. So, the woman who was standing in front of the narrator had held the door tightly because she didn't want the narrator to enter the house. She was preventing the narrator from entering her house. She kept staring at the narrator and at first, uh, she could not recognize her. Perhaps I was mistaken, I thought. Perhaps isn't her. So since Mrs. Darling, that is the woman who was standing in front of the narrator, was not able to recognize her, the narrator thought that she might have come to the wrong house or uh, the lady in front of her is not actually Mrs. Darling. I thought, perhaps, 
it isn't her. I had seen her only once, fleetingly, and that was years ago. It was most probable that I had rung the wrong bell. So here the narrator thinks that might, maybe she has come to the wrong house and uh, the reason for making such a mistake was that she had seen the woman, she had seen Mrs. Darling only for a short time and that too long ago, many years ago. The woman let go of the door and stepped to the side. She was wearing my mother's knitted cardigan. The wooden buttons were rather pale from washing. She saw that I was looking at the cardigan and half hid again behind the door. But I knew now that I was right. So the atmosphere was kind of weird. There was no welcoming note. There was no warmth. The woman who answered the door stepped aside and let go of the door. And the narrator recognized her mother's green colored knitted cardigan which the woman was wearing. The wooden buttons of the cardigan had become pale because of washing and the narrator at once knew that this cardigan once belonged to her dead mother. The woman noticed that the narrator was looking at her cardigan and she hid behind the door. She was like, uh, she was not wanting to show anything or tell anything to the narrator. Now, the protagonist, that is the narrator, knew that she had come to the right house. So after seeing that the woman in front of her was wearing her mother's cardigan, she at once realized that she had not made any mistake and that she had come to the right house to this correct address. Well, you knew my mother? I asked. Have you come back? said the woman. I thought that no one had come back, only me. The protagonist asked the woman about her mother. The narrator asked Mrs. Darling whether she knew her mother or not. And Mrs. Darling asked her if she had come back. And the narrator replied that only she had come and that nobody else had accompanied her. A door opened and closed in the passage behind her. A musty smell emerged. I regret. I cannot do anything for you. I have come here especially on the train. I wanted to talk to you for a moment. It is not convenient for me now, said the woman. I can't see you another time. So now, the narrator says that a stale smell occurred all over the house and the woman standing in front of her told her that she could not help her anyways. Mrs. Darling told her that she could not do anything for her. And the narrator tried to persuade Mrs. Darling to speak to her. She told Mrs. Darling that she had come from a far place on the train just to talk to her and she requested Mrs. Darling to talk to her. But the woman told her that it was not convenient for her to talk to the narrator at that time and she asked the narrator to come back later. She nodded and cautiously closed the door as though no one inside the house should be disturbed. So the woman was continuously trying to prevent the narrator from entering the, into the house and she was behaving as if she didn't want anyone in the house to get disturbed because of the narrator. I stood where I was on the step. The curtain in front of the bay window moved. Someone stared at me and would then have asked what I wanted. Oh, nothing, the woman would have said. It was nothing. So the narrator now sees a curtain moving on the window bay and she also sees that someone was staring at her from inside the house. She thought that it was nothing as the woman would have told her anyways if she had asked. I looked at the nameplate again. Darling, it said in black letters on white enamel and on the jam, the number, number 46. As I walked slowly back to the station, I thought about my mother who had given me the address years ago. It had been in the first half of the war. I was home for a few days and it struck me immediately that something or other about the rooms had changed. I missed various things. My mother was surprised. I should have noticed so quickly. Then she told me about Mrs. Darling. I had never heard of her but apparently she was an old acquaintance of my mother 
whom she hadn't seen for years. She had suddenly turned up and renewed their contact. Since then, she came regularly. After stepping back from the house, the narrator went back to the station. And when she went back to the station, she recalled some of the memories of the past and she thought about her mother and what all her mother had told her. And she remembers that she was home for a few days and suddenly she was astonished to see that the room was a little bit different. Various things were changed and many things were missing. And then the narrator's mother, Mrs. S, was surprised that she noticed the changes a little later. Nevertheless, at that time, her mother told her about this woman that her name was Mrs. Darling. The narrator's mother also told her that uh, she had been an old acquaintance of hers and that she had not seen her for years. And suddenly Mrs. Darling came to visit her and since then they had been in regular contact. Every time she leaves here, she takes something home with her, said my mother. She took all the table silver in one go and then the antique plates, plates that hung there. So, the narrator's mother told her that whenever the woman, that is, whenever Mrs. Darling came to visit her, she took something from the house with her and uh, she often took table silvers, antique plates and uh, other crockery units and once Mrs. Darling had trouble over carrying a large vase. She had trouble lugging those large vases and I am worried she got a crick in her back from the crockery. My mother shook her head prettyingly. So the narrator's mother told her that the cramp in Mrs. Darling's back was because of the crockery. I would never have dared ask her. She suggested it to me herself. She ins even insisted. She even insisted. She wanted to save all my nice things. If we have to leave here, we shall lose everything, she says. So this woman, Mrs. Darling, kept telling the narrator's mother that she wanted to save her precious things, her expensive things, and that's why she was carrying all those things away with her. That's why Mrs. Darling took pain in visiting the narrator's mother regularly and carrying the crockeries along with her. And what was the reason for that? What was the reason for which Mrs. Darling wanted to take all the precious things? She said that because of the war, Mrs. S and her daughter will have to leave the place someday, will have to leave their house some, someday, and that if she doesn't carry those crockery and other things along with her, Mrs. S would lose everything. Have you agreed with her that she should keep everything? I asked. So the narrator now asks his mother if she really wanted Mrs. Darling to take all the things with her. As if that's necessary, my mother cried. It would simply be an insult to talk like that. And then in reply, the narrator's mother says that if she had not allowed Mrs. Darling to take the things with her, it would be an insult to ask her not to take the things. And think about the risk she is running each time she goes out of our door with a full suitcase or bag. So now the narrator's mother tells the narrator that uh, when Mrs. Darling was carrying their things, she was going out with a risk herself because she was carrying suitcase, a suitcase full of items. So the narrator's mother kind of supported uh, Mrs. Darling and from here we can understand that the narrator's mother trusted Mrs. Darling. She believed that Mrs. Darling was going to return all the belongings of theirs that she was taking with her once the war was over. And with that hope, Mrs. S had sent all her precious belongings and possessions. So yeah, that was it for today's video. We are going to continue with the story in our next video. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you have found this video helpful, then please like the video. Thank you for watching.